Hello, DGENs. Welcome to Degenerate Bets. I am the Brofix One. AJ with me, as always, is my co-host, Noah. Um, dude, fuck. Baseball. Like, here we are. We're in October. Obviously, postseason, it's wonderful. And I'm on the wrong side. If uh, you follow me on Twitter or uh, any of my social media, you'll see that I had the Cardinals money line today. Really thinking Wainwright was going to pull it out. But here we are with my thumbs up my ass. With one of the most boring games I've seen in a long time between these two teams. Um, Dodgers, I hate the Dodgers more than anything. I don't, I hope they don't make the, win the World Series, considering how disrespectful it was for them to be at the favorite um, and being in a wild card game. Noah, what are your takeaways from this game? And do you think the Dodgers can actually pull out? Um, as I checked last, they're uh, plus two. 50 probably at plus 175 maybe even minus 110 right now to win the uh world series where do you sit on them i mean i doubt they're at minus odds but um you know they 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 have to be in like it makes sense that they're one of the favorites if not i mean they are the favorite but you know i I mean they're good they're just good they are unfortunately and i hate it i hate it but they're good yeah, it's one of those things where I guess it's death taxes, and as long as the Dodgers have a wallet, they'll be a good baseball team. Uh, with that being said, though, we have postseason going. We're in full swing right now. We're about to be in the best time of sports being um, mid-October. Uh, tomorrow, we have the White Sox and the Astros going head-to-head. Um, first game of the day. I'm pulling up those lines right now because my computer is not liking me today. Uh What are your thoughts on the um, Astros and White Sox? I mean, obviously, the Astros are pieces of shit, um, as any baseball fan would say. Uh, The White Sox looking a lot better um, in the first half than they did in the second half of the year. Uh, You know, I'm sorry, not postseason. um, All-star game slumps, like after that all-star break, it is really telling of a team, but still pulling it out and being able to win their division. Um, What are your thoughts on the White Sox and Astros? And uh, which way are you leaning on this game? Um, I like the Astros to take game one at home with McCullers pitching, um, especially right-handed pitcher. Uh, the White Sox have hit a lot better off the lefties this year. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I like the Astros for the series in general. Um, I think, uh, I'm going to say that they take this in four. Wow. And... Yeah, I mean, I think they'll they'll start it off by taking game one. Um, unfortunately, I hate to agree with you, but yeah, this this Astros team is firing on all cylinders right now. Um, they are uh, minus one thirty five on the money line, minus one and a half on the points. Uh, White Sox being plus one ten. Uh, kind of the lines that I think we're going to see for a lot of the playoffs this year with uh, such good teams being um, against each other. Obviously, we're going to see some really good pitcher at plus money and that'll be something to take advantage of in the future um but yeah the the astros i hate to say it um they they look damn good going in and i hate they're probably they're gonna make it out of this um series easy um i hope it goes to five games just because i love i love you know uh, the last game of a series baseball it's always the best baseball uh really hoping for game seven a world series every year but yeah astros (laughs) Damn. Yeah. You might as well take them on the money line. I hate the point spread in baseball um, unless I'm getting half a point, but that's just my thoughts on it. Um, And then let's go really quick to the uh, next game on the docket. You got the Rays and the Red Sox, Red Sox coming off a day's rest after a great game against the Yankees. And they just looked at, they looked epic against the Yankees and I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. They looked extremely good. Um, I'm really liking like their bats are hitting all like the way they need to right now. I'm really vibing with this Red Sox team. Uh, however, Tampa Bay seems to win that just that city. <laughs> they like to win championships. Uh, right now, the series odds for the Rays, you got a minus 150 to win the whole thing. Um, if my computer would load, I would have the Red Sox too, but I don't. Uh, the game probably um, not seeing the line right now. Do you have the line on it, Noah? Oh, or Noah can't hear me. He might be frozen. And this DGENs is what we call another technical difficulty we're working through um, as we get, uh, you know, 
more into the show. We will have Didn't less. Know, yeah. Up, oh, you back? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry about that, dude. Um, Arizona internet is not treating me well right now. But uh, do you happen to have the uh, raised Red Sox line? Because I cannot find it to save my life. My computer is throwing a hissy fit. Uh, let me let me check real quick. Let's see if I can pull that up. Because you know the Rays being, I mean, I'm excuse me, uh, Red Sox being hot right now. I kind of like them. You know, they're keeping the momentum going and everything. But yeah, so sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's uh, Rays minus one sixty, Red Sox plus one forty. Plus one forty is the run line, one and a half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's the over under on the game? Uh, eight. Eight. I kind of like eight with the bats being the way they are for the Red Sox and the Tampa Bay hitting the way they are. Um, the over might be something to mess around with. Uh, who's uh? Do we uh, know who's going for uh, the uh, teams? Who's pitching? Uh, yeah. Let's see. Got uh, Eduardo Rodriguez pitching for the Red Sox, who has given up a total of five runs in his last five outings, including two scoreless outings in his last two to end the season. I love and uh, Shane, Shane McClanahan for the Rays, who also has been pitching pretty well lately, although his last two starts against the Red Sox have both been losses. Interesting, interesting stat. Thank you for that, Noah. Um, yeah, oh, with that stat, I kind of like the under now. Um, but, uh, no, I don't know. Maybe first five for uh, Red Sox would be a good bet, taking the money line or um, with the points, uh, especially with how that guy's pitching right now. Um, Eduardo, right? He's starting for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way yeah. he's been pitching, you know, five runs, like you said, in the last five games, five outings. That's a damn good line to be going into the playoffs. And at baseball is a very streaky sport, it's something that when you get hot, you, you stay hot. We Unfortunately, the Cardinals fell victim to uh, sucking the last couple games and not keeping their win streak alive. But, um, yeah, you know what? Give me the Red Sox. Give me them first five and give me them on the full game money line, too. I think that's, uh, yeah, Red Sox all day. I think they're hot. They're going to keep being hot. We'll look at Tampa Bay going down the line. But uh, what are your thoughts on the game? Uh, I like the I like the Sox. I, yeah. I like them to keep this momentum going. Um, I'd, I'd like him to potentially win this series as well. Ooh. I think it's going to be a tough one, but, um, you know, we should see should see Chris Sale in there at some point. Yeah, true. Um, I don't know if that'll be game two or game three. And then, uh, you know, he might have Yovaldi coming back up for game five of the series, which... Hey, Yavaldi pitched a hell of a game the other night. That game was game four or five, and yeah, I mean he's not, he's not, I wouldn't say consistently good enough to be like a, you know, knockout ace pitcher. But yeah, they, you know, they had one game that mattered, and they clearly trusted Yavaldi more than Chris Sale or anybody else. So, well, they trusted Yavaldi a lot more than a lot of us trusted Yavaldi. I mean, when I saw he was well, coming he, out to man, start from, I was like, any, really? Any Pitched to Jim, so. Oh, he really um, I like, did. I like riding, I like riding this Boston momentum and seeing where it takes us. Hell yeah, let's ride Boston, Boston all day. We're both on the Sox tomorrow. Let's keep it going with them. Uh, rolling in. Do you want to go then to? Uh, you know what? Let's go to since we're talking about Thursday sports. Let's go to Thursday night football tomorrow. We have a barn burner. This is one of the few games where. You look at it and you're like, yeah, this is a Thursday night football prime time game. You got the Rams and the Seahawks. Rams coming off of a devastating loss to the Arizona Cardinals, who are going to go undefeated. I'm on that at, as of this point. Um, in case you were wondering, no, I do think the Cardinals are going to be uh, undefeated this season. Um, I mean, they just stomped on the Rams. And uh, With that being said, I don't think the Seahawks are going to do the same thing. The Seahawks have been very questionable this entire season. Uh, Russell Wilson has been doing Russell Wilson things, though. Um, What are your uh, early thoughts on this game, Noah? Rams by 14. Woo! Shit, really? Yeah. Uh, Seattle's defenses look like hot garbage, and... Um, you know, I like the Rams to, 
I mean, I'll take him on the spread. I might even bump that spread up sitting at two and a half right now. I might bump that up to four and a half or even five or six and a half. Um, yeah. Just get some nice plus odds on that. hundred <clears throat> percent. I agree with you. Uh, and then, um, you know, I, uh, I got to look in, I don't know what the number is at, but I think I'm going to love the, the Matthew Stafford over on passing yards. And um, yeah, we'll see. I just, I, th- I think at the end of the day, I, you know, I don't think Seattle's defense is going to be able to do much, if anything, to slow down the Rams or stop them. And I think the Rams will get enough stops to give them a pretty decent win. Yeah, and I think that's going to be big with this Rams team is they need the stops because Matthew Stafford obviously can score the points with that offense. But if they can't get the stops on defense, um, the Seattle team could run away with it. However, (laughs) I mean, this Rams team besides last week is looking un freaking believable. Matthew Stafford is the real deal. Um, I'm loving what Cooper Cup is doing. Um, I actually have a parlay going with uh, Cooper Cup to score anytime touchdown with um, the Rams to cover uh, the spread. Big fan of Cooper Cup and what he's doing right now and the connection he has with Matthew Stafford. Uh, Yeah, I'm taking the two and a half and just enjoying my night tomorrow and maybe parlaying that with the uh, Red Sox to win. You know, just have a fucking day with it. It's Thursday and we are we have three different sports we can bet on, including, well, four different sports we can bet on, including preseason hockey and preseason NBA. Um, I'm staying away from a lot of those lines, though, uh, just because it's preseason and the uh, Suns almost screwed oh, yeah. me out of a couple wins today. <laughs> so I'm going to be staying away from those looking forward. Um, anything else you're looking for on uh, Thursday Night Football or um, any other uh, bets you like on that? Um, I'm, I'm tempted to take the under. It's what do you have 50, it at? Because I don't have it up right now. 55. Ooh, okay. Uh, my only problem with that is I do think the Rams will score about like 30 to 35 points. Um, so then it's a question about whether or not they can hold Seattle under 20 to like 20 or less. I think they can, which is why I'm leaning under, but not enough to, to take it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting line. Um, are they're, they're in Seattle, right? Yes, they are. I think uh, so. Seattle weather. I think this is going to be a weather play for the total on this one. Um, if it's raining, it's pouring. You know, we saw last week. With, should uh, we Bills. should we check the should we check the forecast? Holy shit! Are we about to be a real sports show right now? Checking weather and everything. This is a big step for us thinking ahead like this. Go us, dude. And we got a logo and everything. Now we're checking weather. Some would say Seattle. we are top tier. 55 degrees and clear skies tomorrow. Ooh, 55 degrees. And you got Matt Stafford and the Rams coming in. And they've been playing in nothing but warm weather and domes the last couple of weeks. Already cold in Seattle. That's shocking. Kind of I mean, like the under already. It, a little chilly. It's not cold. I mean, not cold. No, absolutely. But I'm saying, well, 55. I'm matter. from Arizona, you, bro. That shit's you, pretty cold. No, you, you, and you're, you, you get blunt. acclimated to that um, Los Angeles weather and shit. That's all I'm saying. No, you get that blood pump and 55 doesn't matter. Fair enough. I guess Matt Stafford also did spend uh, the last uh, couple years in uh, Detroit. So cold weather really doesn't mean shit to him. Yeah, like Thank the we're... last like almost decade in Detroit. <laughs> He was there like, what, eight or nine years? Too long. He was there for way too long. That's all yeah. I know, bro. <laughs> he's, been in, he's been in cold weather plenty of times, having to play at Soldier Field and Lambeau Field every year which, out. In, which is, I guess, why it's kind of shocking that um, Tom Brady lost to Bel- – I mean, almost lost to Belichick. You know what I mean? Like, Belichick is one of those guys that he, he'll spray water on the ball and shit, and Tom Brady's throwing that away. Like he's never thrown a wet ball before. I don't know. That's we'll talk about Tampa on the next uh, degenerate bets because I've got some serious issues with them and uh, the way some of the lines are coming out. But Noah, I think it's time we get to the bread and butter uh, and my favorite thing to bet on right now because I keep winning with it. Um, I keep going positive on my college football picks, and so I think I'm the biggest college football fan right now. Uh, you want to? You just want to get into it, bro? 
Yeah, let's dive in. Let's Dude. just dive in head first, baby. Let's go and let's keep talking about Thursday because Thursday apparently is just going to be a fucking field day for us. It's going to be just a one, just a sign of things to come with how beautiful our days are going to be because we got Thursday night football with Coastal Carolina versus Arkansas State. Coastal Carolina is a 19 and a half point favorite over under at 73. Um, the money line is just stupid. You got Arkansas State plus 700. Coastal Carolina minus 1100. <laughs> I mean, that's great for them. Uh, they're a great football team. They keep producing. Uh, I hate spreads like this usually, but Arkansas State can't do jack shit. Um, it opened up at 17. I would take them at 20. Um, give me Coastal 19 and a half. Um, I mean, Coastal will win. They're not in any jeopardy of losing this game. Um, I, I'm staying off of it. I just, a 19 and a half is a lot. A couple things go wrong and you're not covering that. Yeah, no, obviously. But, you know, sometimes in life, I just want unnecessary stress. So what is, I take. What is our, uh, what is our over under after that game? Because it's 73 the right now. Oh, That's freaking mind. high. It opened at you... 72, bro. Yeah. Like that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, and, and, well, but but the problem is you don't know because this could go over very easily. It's I mean it's the fun belt. It's, it is. They, it's, they score. They score a lot. And you look at the way they're pricing it right now on sports books. You got them at minus one ten on the over and the under. Some most of the times when you're talking over under, you see a little bit of a lean one way or the other, but being dead even on the money i mean especially a day out from game time or day of game time that's yeah 73 that's a lot of freaking points but hey if it's a fun game i'm all down for it i might live bet the over let's go (laughs) (laughs) i mean i've seen i've seen sunbelt games go you know to 90 or 100 points yeah before so it wouldn't be out of the question yeah nothing that we haven't seen before uh but yeah, I'll take Coastal in the 19 and a half just because I want a good sweat on uh, Thursday. Noah's staying off of that one. Let's go to Friday, a game that we're both going to be on heavy. You got Arizona State uh, going to Stanford. Uh, Arizona State being a 13-point favorite on the like 13 straight up, uh, excuse me, money line minus 550 for Arizona State plus 400 on Stanford. Over under at 51 and a half. We got some Pac-12 action on Friday, Noah, Arizona State coming off of a big win this weekend. However, I freaking hate them. They're not a good football team. They're number <laughs> like, they're just not, dude. And Stanford, they're yeah. sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I need someone to explain to me how Stanford's a 13 point dog right? after af- after beating <laughs> Oregon. How do you beat the number three team in the nation? And then go into Arizona, who's somehow number fucking 22. And then you're like, yeah, I'm a 13-point dog. Like Vegas, fine. Give me those points all freaking day long. Give me the 14. Shit, you want to put it at 20 and a half. I mean, you want to put it at seven and a half. I'll take it at seven and a half. Um, I'm on Stanford, bro. I, I think this ASU team, don't get me wrong, they can win some games. But just in the Pac-12, I think it's a toss-up. And I think this is one Stanford can at least – come into the uh, points and cover it. Bro, almost every single Pac-12 game is a fucking toss-up. Unless you're playing Arizona, <laughs> it's pretty much a toss-up. Yeah, I honestly. Mean, speaking of, I've got a pretty pretty piping hot take um, that I went in on for the winner of the Pac-12 football conference this year oh shit you have a winner of the conference yes let me hear it dude and i gotta check just to double check to see make sure what odds i got him at but i like oregon state give me the beavers baby the beavers really to win Mm -hmm. the conference yes sir oh wow what did you get him at uh, that's what I'm just double checking. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like what the Beavers are doing right now. They're putting up good numbers. 
that offense seems to be clicking a plus, lot more than people. Sorry, go I ahead. Admit, plus, I got him at plus 5,000. That's nice, dude. Uh, so, Oregon State. 50 to 1 odds. Um, yeah, I mean, they have a pretty, pretty easy schedule. And, you know, they're 2 and 0 to start Pac 12 play. I'm, I think, you know, uh, their only loss this year is to Purdue, and which Purdue's, Purdue's looking good. Pur- uh, Purdue's not great, but, um, you know, they are Big Ten and not Pac-12. Um, you know, I think I think they can get to that last game of the season against Oregon with only one or two losses. And if they can beat Oregon, or maybe they won't even need to, because if they go through the rest of their Pac-12 schedule without losing and then Oregon loses another Pac-12 game, Shit. that game's meaningless, and they're in the Pac-12 championship. And then that's just one more game, and they win the Pac-12, and, you know, Crazier things have happened. So I, I saw that plus yeah. 5,000 and I decided I needed to jump on it. You know, you, yeah, you get odds like that at that point. That's just a value play. You know, that's a good investment. That's like investing in a shit coin and then hoping it just goes to the moon, you know. But it, instead of a shit coin, you actually have a football team that can produce and put up points. I mean, I, I'm not upset about that bet taking them at those odds. I might, I might need to hop on a little bit of that action. Uh, but anyways, back to anyways, our game, back to, our yeah, game of Stanford interest. ASU. Yeah, I think that's ridiculous. So I'm taking Stanford to cover. Um, I'll take a little bit on Stanford at, the, at, you know, plus 400 or whatever money line. Oh, most definitely. I'll probably, then, yeah, they're at plus 330. Um, oh, no, yeah, plus 400 right now. Wow. And then, yeah, and then give me the over. I mean, it's Pac-12. We don't know how to play defense. I mean, we do sometimes, but most of the time we don't. Awesome. I got you over 51 and a half um, plus 13. I'm also going to be on them plus 13. And like you said, you got to sprinkle just a little bit on that money line. This ASU team is broad, bro. And it's just, you know, one of those things, kind of like U of A, they just shouldn't win games. They, well, they're not going to win games. They should win. Um, you know, I'm looking ahead at the schedule. Um, I'm going to be down, uh, Shout out, I'm going to be down at a homecoming week for U of A reporting live from that game, and it's going to be an absolute stinker. They got Cal, and it's just going to be a that's, that's, bad football game. Dude. I'm not looking that forward is, to it. That is one of the, like, two or three games on our schedule we might have a chance at, like, being in it. Yeah, you remember we were supposed to have a fucking chance against NAU? You remember that? Noah Pepperidge Farm fucking remembers that here we are with a loss to fucking NAU. Yeah, but we, we also were, you know, supposed to lose by like 28 and a half at Oregon, and then we were only down five going oh, into the fourth God. quarter. Oh, thank God. That Pac-12 just fucking sucks at football. God, we love that. Fuck, oh, God. I, and like, don't get me wrong. I'm stoked <laughs> to go. I haven't been to a U of A game in a couple of years. I'm excited to get back into Arizona Stadium. Uh, but Jesus... <laughs> We are so bad. We're so bad. Um, all right, let's keep it well, rolling. You know what they say? Hey, you know what they say? You you win some, you lose most. Yeah, but I mean, I would like to win at least one. At least one. We're going on a year and a half now. Are we going on a year and a half now, or is it just a year? Um, no, it's it's been a while. It's been way too long, bro. It's been way too long. We're sitting here at no wins. Um, it, we're, we're, we're getting dangerously close to two calendar years. I'm not a fan of that. I'm really, I'm really not a fan of getting the two calendar years with no victories. Like U of A, do yourselves a fucking favor and win a football game. You know, do yourselves a favor to go into next season. You just got to win one. So at least you can say, well, we got fucking blown out by every team. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky and beat UCLA. I don't know. Even a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then. That wouldn't be finding a nut. That would be finding the fucking pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Also, speaking of pot of gold, shout out to Notre Dame being assholes and uh, making the shirt go two and two. Close game towards the end, but uh, fuck, man. Shirt two and two, but hey, don't you worry, bro. I'm, I'm gonna, a little spoiler. I got some blue on it. We'll cover it later in the show. But let's keep it rolling, bro, because we got just so many bangers this weekend. Talking next, of course, about uh, 
Arkansas Ole Miss. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. <laughs> Jesus, I had a stroke right there. Um, Arkansas, uh, Mississippi is uh, Ole Miss. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Is uh, minus five and a half on the spread. Uh, money line minus 220. Arkansas plus 180. Uh, over under at 66 and a half. You know, with this Ole Miss team coming off a loss to Bama, I did live bet them money line. If you follow me on Twitter at Brofic1, you saw that. Um, I like the odds I was getting. I thought, eh, it's Saturday. Who fucking knows? But, you know, you never bet against Bama. Unfortunately, I had to learn that lesson yet again. I will probably have to learn that lesson five or ten more times before I really sinks in. Uh, where, where are you leaning on this game? Because kind of like the points, kind of like Arkansas to win, though. Uh, just with the way they've been playing and that defense. I really am a big fan of that Arkansas defense. Ole Miss is a great football team. Where are you going with this, bro? Um, I don't know. It's a tough one. I mean, both teams got absolutely demoralized last week. Um, Arkansas losing, what was it, 37-0 to zero or something to Georgia. and Ole Miss losing. I mean, I think they scored a garbage time touchdown or two to – make the final score like 42 to 21 or something like that. But um, I don't even know. I'm, I'm staying off of this one. I, I, I think it'll be an exciting game. It's two ranked teams, but I don't even know what to think. Cause I guess if, if, if we erase the each of their games from last week, And because of that five and a half. That hook is raw. Um, I think I take Arkansas, but I'm buying a point. I'll take him at six and a half. No, you're going to take him at six and a half. I can't blame you there, really. Um, especially buying that point. Uh, when I'm looking at this game, I'm looking at two things. Uh, the big thing is, you know, I'm a big eye test guy. Watching the games, I saw, I thought Arkansas – played a more competitive game against Georgia than Ole Miss did against Alabama. They didn't score a point. I still thought it was more competitive. I, I, like, honest to God, I still think that offense was good. I think that this Georgia team is just a hell of a lot better than we give them credit for. Uh, and I think them against Alabama in the um, college football playoffs is going to be a hell of a game. With that being said, Arkansas at home. I am a huge fan of home dogs especially this college football season you're gonna give me mississippi is the home team though arkansas is on the road then why on my why does it say that it's Ole Miss at arkansas unless i totally misread that i again i've been having computer issues all day i really don't know what's going on no anymore. it's um they're uh they're playing in uh in oxford mississippi Oh, they're playing in Mississippi. Well, that changes everything. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you know, home dog, you're getting plus odds. Good football team against another team that's coming off of a big loss. is going to be a big revenge game, comeback game. Throw that out the window. Mississippi, if we're playing at Mississippi, that crowd is going to be rocking. Um, yeah, I'll take Mississippi. I'm not going to buy the point. Um, I'm going to take them at five and a half. Um, just because, yeah, I like five and a half. It's a good number for me. Um, I know it doesn't cross any of the big numbers, but I'll take the five and a half and call it a day. Man, that is like the most cursed number in football betting is five and a half. I understand, but you got to understand my uh, my favorite number is 13. So I might as well go with all the bad shit. You know what I mean? All right. <laughs> always, always buy up or down a point for five and a half. Nah, I'm going to stick it at five and a half. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. Um, All righty. Now, a game I might buy a half a point or something. Uh, next game on my docket is uh, Texas at – I think they're at Oklahoma, but I don't trust my computer anymore. No, Oklahoma nope, is at Texas, so my computer yep. just has everything backwards. Okay. Hey, odds makers, when you're making lines and you're posting them on the internet – like every other sport has been covered for the last decades. And I'm talking hundreds of years at this point. You put the home team at the bottom, okay? You put the home team at the bottom and the away team on top. 
You don't give me this bullshit right here where I'm looking at Oklahoma on the bottom, Texas on top. What the fuck are we doing? All right, that's just called being a professional. Okay, let's try doing it anyway. You got um, Oklahoma as the favorite. My, I can't believe Oklahoma's the favorite. So minus three um, on the spread, minus 160 on the money line. Texas plus 140, over under at 63 and a half. What, what are we doing? What, what is going on with this Oklahoma team? Why are they still a favorite in any game at this point? Because this Spencer Rattler kid hasn't shown me jack shit. What are your thoughts, bro? Because I'm, I'm flabbergasted and I'm still upset about the home and away team thing. Um, I think this is the, this is a week Oklahoma loses. Sorry, yes. let me correct myself. Not, not the week Oklahoma loses. This is the first week Oklahoma loses because they're not only going to have one loss this season, they're going to have multiple, uh, two to three losses. <clears throat> I don't know how the fuck they're still ranked sixth. Um, this, this Oklahoma team's not good. They're, they're scared aiding by against unranked teams, beating a bunch of unranked teams by, you know, one score. Um, no, I'm not, I don't love, I'm not in love with Texas. I, I like them. I think they're a decent team, but I'm not in love with them. They make me a little bit nervous in this game. But I do think, you know, Bijan Robinson, I think he'll follow up his 200-yard performance last week by having another great game against Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler, not great. I do wonder if Oklahoma comes to the decision to bench him if because I'm assuming they have another five-star backing him up or something, or at least a four-star quarterback. So you never know if they get to the point where they bench Rattler, some you know, 18, 19 year old kid might come in and just, you know, play lights out and be tremendous. So <clears throat> we'll see, but as of now. Assuming Rattler is going to start the game, um, you know, I'll take a half point and take Texas plus three and a half. And then also I'm going to take a money line as well, but just have that safety net of them to cover. Dude. Yeah. Can't blame you on that. And I love buying that point. I mean, that half a point uh, I'm with you, Spencer Rattler. I hate to say it. He's an Arizona guy. Uh, went to one, went to a high school in my school district. It's pretty cool, but this guy sucks. This guy cannot figure out this offense. He cannot figure out how to read a defense. I don't know what he's doing. For his sake, I hope it's a development thing and he just needs to develop more. But he's in his third year, right? Like, he's eligible for the draft, isn't he? Or is that next year? Noah's frozen on me, so I'm not sure what his thoughts are on that. Um, but regardless, I mean... Um, no, this sorry, is a second Oh, second year. All right. So we got one more for his sake. I hope he can figure it out next year, but he's just not getting it this year. Um, I, you know, I love, I love the three points they're going to give me for Texas, but Noah, it's me. It's, it's me. I love underdogs. Go ahead. Give me the money line. I'm just going to take Texas at plus plus one forty. Um, was almost on the shirt this week. It was, I like this game a lot, but you know, I think the shirt needs to have a little bit more gravitas and a little bit more uh, excitement around it. So I'm not going to just bet the shirt on an Oklahoma team or a Texas team that's going to win Oklahoma. Oh, you see. yeah, that's – well, just – I have – you just froze on me again. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, what's up? Talk about the shirt and the gravitas, how important it is, and how, honestly, it's one of the many oh, things. Oh, I was going to say, I, I got to – Oh, uh, you keep breaking up on me, bro. This is this is rough. I really need to figure out this internet thing. Um, I'm supposed to have quote unquote gigablast uh, internet that so we don't have these issues. But uh, here we are right now. Noah, you're back. Thank you. I was just uh, talking about our gigablast internet and how it's obviously not doing gigablast things. But I was going to say, I feel like it's. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm about 98% sure it's on your end. Oh, 100, I, I would agree at this point it is um, on my, my end at this time. Uh, I do apologize for that. However, like I said, the shirt needs a little bit more gravitas than Texas, Oklahoma, but I'll take Texas money line. Noah's on Texas money line and plus three and a half. He's buying the half point. Honestly, it might get that up to 
three and a half. I don't know where the money's at right now, but if Oklahoma gets keeps getting tickets at three, we're going to see three and a half probably by game time uh, at that minus one ten odds. Um, yeah, this is my uh, my my first upset watch of the week. Definitely is. Oh Oklahoma. shit! You're even calling it an upset watch, bro. There we go. Yeah, I actually I got a couple upset watches uh, this week. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, What's the, tell me the next upset watch you got, and then we'll we'll talk about that game. Um. Well, <clears throat> I, I would say my my next one is you know, we got Notre Dame playing at Virginia Tech. Ooh. Notre Dame a, a, only a one point favorite, so it's not a huge like upset watch upset watch type of thing. Um, but they are still, you know, Virginia Tech, the dog at home. I'm not even messing with the spread on this one. Just give me money line. I mean, you know, I love Enter Sandman. Enter yes. Sandman is tremendous. Yes. Um, Virginia Tech, you know, want to know this season as a home dog against a top 10 team. Yep. Although I uh, did Notre Dame fall out of the top 10. They had to have hope they did i'll pull it up right now but after uh losing on the shirt they should be uh definitely out of the top 10 yeah they, they felt they fell to 14 but you know what Good. whatever virginia virginia tech a home dog against a ranked team for the second time this season give me virginia tech again we like them Hell yeah we like what they're doing there um respect to notre dame for scheduling such a difficult schedule However, it's not going to pan out when they miss the playoff because they've lost like three games. Yeah, and I will say I think that's something they're going to have to look at when they uh, look at um, the college football playoffs. Is Notre Dame actually scheduled a rough season this year? And they didn't. But if you have two, if you have two losses, it doesn't matter. If you're if they're a one loss team and their only loss is to Cincinnati, they're fine. But you know, once you lose more than one game, it's kind of kind of tough at that point yeah and it does seem vegas is torn on this game as well notre dame minus 115 on the money line and virginia tech minus 105 on the money line so yeah definitely i'm on virginia tech as well i love what they're doing notre dame burn me once shame on you burn me twice not gonna fucking happen uh (laughs) (laughs) give me virginia tech on the money line um Next game I want to talk about, Noah, is a team that you and I both love and adore. Uh, It's those Mormons up in Utah. We're talking a BYU, Boise State. uh, BYU, a a five-and-a-half point favorite, minus 230 on the money line. Boise State, plus 190, over-under at 57. I mean, do I really need to even say the pick, or can I just – should I just clip everything? BYU to cover. Let's let's go. Yes. (laughs) Same wavelength. I'm like – BYU five and a half is five and a half five and a half at home in Provo yes yes please give me that all day money money printer go (laughs) you know like just prove that money for me man I mean BYU minus five and a half at home I don't give a fuck about Boise State how good or not good they are just it doesn't even matter honestly BYU, (laughs) BYU to cover forever and always um I mean yeah, last week a little interesting because their starting quarterback was not supposed to play, and then he didn't play day of. They're like, "Oh no, he's playing," and then he didn't play. But it doesn't even matter because their backup, Baylor Romney, one of the mini nieces and one of the mini nieces and nephews of Mitt Romney, <laughs> you know, Gunner Romney, their you know number one receiver, also on the team. So you know, we got a little Romney to Romney <laughs> action going here. Uh, what can we say? The Romneys own Utah and, um, you know, and they're, they're taking college football by storm. They are. Politi- I mean, politi- political power move. I don't know. Use your own judgment <laughs> on that. But, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, BYU. yeah, I just, I can't not take BYU, man. It's hard. It's hard not to. And, you know, you look I mean, at I mean, I, I, I have I have held off like two games this year. That's true. You have. Um, what are they? Five and oh, four and one against the spread. 
I believe so. Um, five and zero sound. I believe they're five and zero against the spread this season. Um, no, 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 no. They they didn't cover the one game. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's oh, they cover no, so they, many games. It's hard to forget. They, the one. they didn't. They didn't cover against Arizona either. So I think they're no. They they're definitely three covered against Arizona. No, they didn't. They were they were a a uh, eleven and a half or twelve and a half or a thirteen and a half point favorite. They only beat us by eight. You're but right. They were I got dogs. You're right. I got a lot. They, they were the dogs against Utah and ASU. I know we both took the money line on both. Right. That was the last games. shirt victory. It was BYU at Utah. Yeah. And then, um, and then they were twenty four point favorite against. Um, USF, and that was when right. their starting quarterback Hall got injured, and Baylor Romney came in. They only won that game by seven. Gave up a lot of points late, so they are three and two, ATS. But but you're giving me BYU under seven to cover, yeah, all day at, at home. Yeah, no question about it. No question. No question. Um, a game that I kind of have a lot of questions about. Uh, also on Saturday, we're talking Auburn against uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. Auburn Tigers, as I learned earlier this season, even though their slogan is <laughs> War Eagles, Bastards. Alabama is such a fucked up place. Um, you got no, um, not, no, it's it's not plural. There's no, it's not Eagles. It's just War Eagle. Why is there saying? So there's only one War Eagle. But there's a shit ton of tigers. Like, what are we doing here? Well, they have the live eagle come down. He flies around and shit over okay. the stadium before the game. Why? But their mascot's a tiger. <laughs> Why do we have an eagle? Give me a tiger running out midfield. I don't want a fucking eagle if my mascot is a tiger. That's all I'm saying. Go war eagle. Why war eagle? We're our no, no. It's it's not go war eagle. It's just war eagle. It's war eagle or just war damn eagle you can throw the dam in the middle if you want to but that's like that's all you say there's no go before it there's no nothing else it's just war eagle you know someone's wife cousin came up with that shit and they were like we gotta put this shit in um well it's it's alabama you know you never know but anyway I'm, I'm, i'm i'm glad over a couple episodes i've been able to educate you on auburn and their sayings and mascots and stuff it's, and, and so for um, the DJs out there that don't know, I did date a girl that went to uh, the University of Alabama, went to an Alabama game. And so obviously I hated Auburn for the time I dated that. But yeah, uh, the entire time I thought they were fucking war eagles. But anyway, um, nope. Auburn is plus 15 and a half, uh, Georgia being the favorite. Um, Auburn, Auburn is a plus 550 on the money line. Georgia minus 800 over under at 47 points. This Aub- Bo Nix, he sucks. I'm going to say that right here, right now. Bo Nix is, if he gets drafted, we're looking at a third round, fourth round draft pick. Um, 15 and a half, kind of scary, but I'll take Georgia in the points. All righty. Interesting. Why? interesting what are you going no, on <laughs> not interesting that's probably the right pick um but i might be an idiot and i'm taking auburn to cover the 15 and a half wow really yeah and it's because bo nix he <laughs> he is he is two-face he is totally two-face he is great at home he plays really great at home, Auburn at home for this game. And then any game at a neutral site or on the road, Bo Nix just shits his pants every single time. But for some reason, I think he's got like a career, like 14 and four record or 14 and three or something at home. I mean, the dude wins at home. Now I'm not taking Auburn to win. That would be reckless and stupid. <laughs> but can but- they stay within – can they stay within two touchdowns? <laughs> maybe. I, I, I like them to do that. Um, maybe catch Georgia sleeping after how bad they whooped uh, Arkansas last week. Um, yeah, I mean, give me Auburn 15 and a half, and uh, I like the over. 
I will say I do like the over in this game. Um, as as dominant as Georgia's defense has been this season, um, I think Auburn can put up around twenty points, and I don't think Georgia's going to score more than thirty five. So, you know, I yeah, think over hits not not by a huge margin, but I do like it over forty seven, and yeah, we'll take Auburn to cover. Yeah, I'm taking the over as well, but I'm on uh, Georgia to cover the 15 and a half. Um, I, I don't trust Bo Nix. I, I get it. He's at home. Um, but from what I've seen this year, I can't trust him to cover that big of a spread. Um, War Eagle, baby. War Eagle. Even though we're fucking Tigers, that makes fucking sense. <laughs> fucking dumbasses up there. Um I mean, shout out to Alabama. That was one of the best games I've ever been to. Alabama, Texas a a couple of years back. But the fuck? Anyway. Speaking um, of Alabama and a and Yeah. Let's talk about Alabama and a and uh, They're playing again right now. Uh, this weekend, I should say. Um, Alabama, 17 and a half point favorite. Uh, I assume because my lines are fucked up, they're going to Texas a and correct? Yes, All right. <laughs> you would be correct on that. Shout out Caesar Sportsbooks for not being able to write lines properly. Um, but yeah, Bama, 17 and a half point favorite. Texas a and is plus 650 on the money line. Alabama is minus 1,000. Over under at 51. <sighs> Bama. I mean, Bama. Come on. Like, 17 and a half. I mean, this Texas A&M team, they're showing me a lot more than I think I expected out of them this year. Uh, it's uh, 17 and a half. That's a lot of points, I will say, especially the way Bam has been playing lately. Where are you leaning on this one? Because I'm kind of leaning Texas to cover, but I'm not 100% sure. No way in <laughs> hell. Yeah? Give me, give me Bama on the points. I don't care. They're they're too damn good. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you remember when they were fourteen point favorite against Florida. I said they oh, should yeah. be a four. I said they should be a fourteen point favorite against every single team that they play yep. until other than maybe Georgia. I still stand by that. I mean, they only beat Florida by two, obviously, but I didn't say they were going to win every game by fourteen. I just said they should be a fourteen point or greater favorite against every SEC team other than Georgia. So if, if they're going to keep throwing me lines between 14 and 17 on Bama, I'm going to keep taking them because they're going to win the majority of these games by 20 plus. So. Um, yeah. They're dominant. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing else they're to just, describe them. Yeah, man. Just I don't know, give me Bama. Just give me Bama. I don't, I don't even, I don't even need to think about it unless they're playing Georgia. Just give me Bama or if the spreads over 20. But yeah. other than that, just just pencil me and don't even ask questions. Yeah, and I know I spent the last five minutes just shitting on Alabama and everything. Um, but yeah, I'm going on them in the points as well. The 17 and a half, as you pointed out, is just juicy. Just juicy. Um, over will be an interesting play. I, I kind of leaning to, leaning towards the un- over. Um, what is that it? Mean? Oh, shit, I think it was at 57. Let me pull it up again real quick. Um, 51 right now. Yeah, I'll take that over easy because honestly, Bama likes to come out and score a lot of points quick, get a big lead, and then they like to give up garbage touchdowns at the end of games. So Yeah, we'll take over, that over all day. Over 57, that's a steal. Fuck yeah. That's a, that's a bigger steal than the spread because that's just, like I said, they're probably just jump up to like a 21 28 point lead against a and m and then <laughs> then they'll just coast the rest of the game and hell yeah um all right noah you know i think we're at a part of the show where uh i kind of want to talk about the game i'm most excited about this weekend uh, yeah which game is that noah we're talking iowa penn state all right i have been on the Knit Nanny Lions or Lion Knit Nannies or whatever stupid knit. shit they are. Nittany, Nittany. Say it with me. Nittany Lions. Nittany Lions. The fuck? I've never heard of a Nittany Lion. This but is becoming an educational are. show here. And like, don't get me wrong. Like, 
like for all the viewers out there, I've watched college football. Like I've always watched college football. I've just never um, dived into these teams or what these mascots are. Um, you know, I just take them because I like the points and shit. But now hosting this show, I do have the opportunity to learn about the stupid fucking names and shit that they have going on in college football, uh, <laughs> such as the Nittany Lions in Pennsylvania, for all fucking places. Anyway, Penn State is a uh, one and a half point dog uh, going into Iowa, I would assume, because my book's all fucked up. Um, yep. Yeah, going into Iowa. Iowa is a minus 130 on the money line. Penn State is minus plus, plus 110. Over under at 41. Noah. I know. I understand the shirt is two and two right now, but we're coming back full force, bro. Penn State money line all fucking day, bro. I can't even, like, it was just too easy. I looked at the lines today and it was like Joseph Smith walking in to BYU and saying, you've got to fucking cover. I looked at it and I was like, well, this is the one to pick. We are going Penn State money line all day. I can't believe that they're an underdog. This Iowa team, I will say, is excellent. I love what they're doing on defense. Defense is a hard thing to have in college football, but it's not good enough. It's not good enough against the Nittany Lions, bro. We're going Penn State money line all day. Noah, what are your thoughts on this game? How correct I am on this shirt this week? I like Penn State as well. Hell yeah, I like. I'd like them to go in um, in a hard-fought, close, very low-scoring game. Uh, This is totally going to be a game of defense Yes. on both sides. Um, I think Penn State will ultimately win because I do think Penn State's defense is a titch better than I was. Um, The over-under is only at 41 points, and it scares me so much that I am tempted to take that under. I think I'm going to ultimately stay off of it just because 41 is 41's low, low. A couple broken plays and that could easily be busted. Oh, very easy. Um, but but yeah. I do want to point out. I do want to point out that your shirts uh, are two and zero when I have agreed with them, and zero and two when I have disagreed with them. So, so uh, shit. Just saying, I like Penn State. This one feels like a winner. You can take this to the bank. Well, hey, let's let's we'll see you at the counter. Let's go ahead. Let's roll with it. Um, the shirt looking to get back on a heater after a couple rough weeks. Um, and hey, follow me at Brofic One on Twitter, Instagram, and at DGen Takes on TikTok for uh, other picks. I'm going to. I guess I have an announcement, Noah. Um, I'm going to be expanding the shirt. The shirt isn't just going to be for college football anymore. We're rolling into the most beautiful time in sports. We're going to get a shirt for baseball, maybe. We're going to get a shirt for basketball, maybe. Shit. Kraken's opening night, maybe. Moneyline. That might be a shirt. I kind of like that money. Oh, but... hell no. <laughs> hell no. We will get into NHL talk Um as the season uh, gets closer and everything, we will have a degenerate bets for that because we are, we don't have to bet the whole damn board, but we might as well, we don't have to bet the whole board, but we damn as well might because God. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I may have forgotten to speak English. I did only get a C plus and a senior English, but uh, next game. Let's talk about another team that probably can't read as well as I do. The LSU Tigers going against the uh, Wildcats of Kentucky. Um, well, that could have any- applied for that could have applied for both teams. <laughs> <laughs> it could have, it could have, but I wanted to take the shot at Louisiana. So here we are. Um, Louisiana is a three and a half point dog. Uh, Kentucky uh, minus one seventy on the money line. LSU plus one forty five over under at fifty and a half. Noah, I hate this LSU team. I hate watching them play. I hate, I, I just hate everything about them, honest to God. And I, the fact that the spread's at three and a half, I think is insulting. That's why I'm just going to slam Kentucky all day, all every day. Give me the three and a half on Kentucky and I'll see you at the window. What did I say about Kentucky before? last week's game against Florida when they were a seven and a half point dog. What'd you say? I said, Kentucky's supposed to be a damn good team. They should be a damn good team. 
which is why I took them to cover. I said I'd sprinkle a little bit on the money line too. What happened? Kentucky ended up beating Florida. Kentucky's going to blow out LSU. They're at, at home, <laughs> three and a half point favorite. I mean, this game shouldn't be super close. No. Uh, the only thing that I can see that would hold this game close is the fact that it will be low scoring, which is why over under at 50 and a half, I like the under. Um, Uh, I like the under at 51 and a half. I'm going to buy a point there. Ooh, just, you're going to buy the point. Thing. Yep. Give me 51 and a half for the under. Kentucky to cover that three and a half. No problem. Under at 51 and a half. Can't blame you there. I'm on Kentucky as well. Um, this is all the These Alabama, these like SEC teams just are not producing the same way they used to. Not only talking about LSU, but let's talk about even Clemson. They're not looking that damn good either. Clemson's in the ACC, dog. Too many fucking C's going around. That's all I know. I thought all of it, all Southern teams were in the SEC. But, I mean, I thought everything was in the SEC, honestly. I mean, the, how big they're getting and everything. But. <laughs> well, you know, five or ten years from now. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's going to be college football sponsored by the SEC. Or SEC football sponsored by NCAA college football. <laughs> shit man um any other games you're excited about this week noah yeah yeah one of the uh caps to the night obviously not the last one because that last spot is almost always reserved for hawaii when they have a home game usually kicking off at about 11 p.m central you know yep. nine pacific whatever uh midnight eastern um, just but, miserable yeah. times I do like a little Pac-12 after dark. Ooh. Yep. And I'm liking an upset watch. You're talking about Utah USC, right? I am talking about Utah USC. USC, a three-point favorite at home. Yep. And I'm putting them on upset watch. Wow. I'm high, I'm high on Utah. Utah's had a little bit of a rough start to their season. I think this is where they kind of turn that around. Um, this Utah team should be pretty good still. Uh, they just haven't been producing how they should. This is a quick turn it around game. Like I said, the Pac-12 super unpredictable. I feel like just about any team in the Pac-12 can win against just about any other team any given week. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'm going to take Utah uh, by a half point here, take them at three and a half, and uh, sprinkle a little bit on the money line, too. We're putting USC on upset watch. And uh, I'll be hammering over 53. That is just too low of an over-under for a Pac-12 game. Yeah, I'm with you on the over at 53. I'll take that all day long. Um no, you know I love my dogs. You know I love my underdogs. Give me Utah money line all day long. USC ain't shit, even though they're playing at home. And looking at it right now, all the money. I'm talking 94% of the money right now is on USC to cover the three, the minus three right now. Um, so get in while you can. Um, I'm seeing the money line posted from plus 162 all the way to plus 135 at most books. Um yeah, hop on that shit. Go ahead and make yourself some money. Uh, Noah putting USC on upset watch. I love it. I love it more than anything in the world because USC can suck a dick. Um, yeah, that's going to be a fun game, dude. I love, love me some Pac-12 after dark. Gives me something to do at night. Yes, sir. So uh, any other uh, games you're in? Actually... I'm sorry, before we uh, close this out, I do want to talk about one game. And it just caught my eye. I don't know if I'm going to bet on this game, but it just kind of caught my eye. As interesting line, interesting game. You got Syracuse and Wake Forest. Um, Wake Forest is a six-point favorite, Syracuse plus six. Um, I'm sorry, excuse me. Uh, Syracuse on the money line is uh, plus 190. Wake Forest minus 230. Over under a 57 and a half. You know me, Noah. You know me. I'm a, I'm a gut better. Like, I'll look at my numbers and everything, but I bet a lot with my gut, and I follow that. 
And there is something in me telling me to take Syracuse and the points because I love Wake Forest. I love what they've been doing. However, there's just something telling me Syracuse can cover the six. Do you have any thoughts on this game? Am I just losing my mind or what's going on with me? Yeah, Wake should cover this spread easy. Syracuse has had a little bit of, I would say, false success this season so far. It's not going to hold up. They're not a good team. Um, Their home field advantage doesn't mean shit because nobody shows up to Syracuse games. Um, I don't know, man. Syracuse hasn't been good since Donovan McNabb was there. Like, like, fuck off. Wake Forest is, Wake Forest should cover the spread easy, in my opinion. Um, All right, all right. I just wanted to throw it out there. I'm not making a pick on it yet. Um, if you want my pick on this game and my full uh, college football card, um, follow me at Brofic1 and us at Gen Takes on Twitter. Noah at N underscore Engelbretson um, for his picks as well. Uh, we're, we're, we're in for a hell of a weekend, dude. I'm excited. I really am. Uh, any last thoughts on this uh, college football slate? Uh, not particularly on the college football slate, um, but we have... I am starting my countdown day by day until the NHL season starts. I am super pumped for that. Uh, If you don't know, I'm a huge hockey fan. So uh, we, we are really looking forward to a full and normal NHL season this year. Oh yeah. Um, Pump for that. Let's get it, baby. I also agree with you. Um, I've always watched hockey, but I became a really big hockey fan during the last playoff run uh, for the Stanley Cup. I'm really excited as well for this hockey season. Probably not as excited as Noah, but hey, another sport to bet on. Another, you know, bunch of athletes doing the best that they can do at the highest level. I am all about it. And then we also got the uh, NBA coming up in, um, I want to say, two weeks now. Two yep. weeks, 13 days, something like that. We got tip off coming yep. soon. We are. Woo! We are about to be cooking, bro. I cannot freaking wait. Um, obviously, keep following us at Degenerate Bets and Degenerate Takes for all of our takes on the upcoming action. And uh, yeah, remember, you don't have to bet the whole board, but you damn as well. My life is too short. And we will be back with another episode of Degenerate Takes to cover NFL Week 5.